Do you see something where this is an easy way to almost like flip cash? Yeah, you can put it that way. I think if if we move like two, three years from now, the space evolves, it will bring more better traders out mm -hmm. if, if it's done right. You always have the, the fight between props who want to do it that way mm -hmm. and props who are only here for the money. Welcome everyone to the Words of Wisdom podcast. We are back once again, the number one podcast in the finance space, the fastest growing, and that's thanks to every single one of you and our incredible guests. Speaking of which, we have an absolute legend in the house today. We are joined by the one, the only, Pasquale. How are you doing? Hello. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you for coming over. I don't, I don't think you came just for the podcast right you i think you got meetings here yeah and stuff. yeah that's yeah. great yeah I, i'd be too honored then <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah no it's great to have you here um i know that you've recently i mean before these recent interviews you've been doing now were you really any you know in the space or on the social media sort of front? no not at all um i kept it to myself like because um yeah i i focused on trading mm -hmm. focused on on my work mm -hmm. and um i think social media always is is just um um you you get lost in it mm -hmm. like pretty quickly it's a time sink in the end and it it's not to the benefit of of myself like mm -hmm. that's why um yeah turned down any interviews uh, because I, I didn't want the, the attention and um i only took it recently because i think the the industry is changing right now mm -hmm. so and i have a lot of insights so i wanted to to help others mm -hmm. to to understand the the stuff behind it mm -hmm. a bit more and um also to to understand like how i do it yeah that's that's the main reason that i speak out right now or definitely the past month definitely well you have like a title probably maybe the the record maybe of uh highest payouts potentially i mean we got two point over 2.5 million mm. in payouts across uh, evaluation firms prop firms <laughs> um that's incredible yeah and i'm sure you know you probably heard that a lot already and uh you know the 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 titles, the clips, it's so easy to do based on those figures. But you know, what is uh, the strategy? What is the mindset behind getting that result? Mm -hmm. If we speak only for prop firms, mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to go a very high risk strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but um, because like trading is very hard mm -hmm. and dealing with prop firms is even harder mm -hmm. um, because you don't, in the end, don't know uh, do I get payout? Do which, which firms do I do I trade? Mm -hmm. All the kind of stuff. So I I try to do it like on a month to month basis mm -hmm. and just um, try to get the most out of it. Yeah, and adapt my strategy accordingly. Definitely, definitely. In terms of high risk as well, is it high risk in terms of the actual trades being taken too? Yeah, definitely. So um, I usually I I don't differ between evaluation and and funded accounts. Mm -hmm. So it's always the same always the same risk um i trade only one to two pairs mm -hmm. mainly gold 80 percent 90 percent of gold mm -hmm. because it's um it's a high volatile uh, market and yeah. high, highly liquid uh, liquid pair so mm -hmm. um you can get gain a lot mm -hmm. about um on on little moves so that's why i choose them mm -hmm. and um in terms of the actual strategy um i usually aim at a one to two, one to three, even one to five trades. Oh, nice. But I don't have like a set um, um, set strategy for that. Mm -hmm. So I just go with uh, what the market offers me. Mm -hmm. But um, I trade only one to two times a day, mm -hmm. like highly um, um, profitable setups that mm -hmm. I think like I only take a trade if I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And then I just go all in all in more or less <laughs> <laughs> so do you use like the three four percent risk on a trade? yeah 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 wow and then uh in terms of strike rate is it relatively high i would imagine to have that confidence um like because it's so high risk uh, i'm more or less like 60 65 percent on prop firms okay if i trade like back then on the personal accounts where it was more money conservative mm -hmm. it was more 75 to 80 percent sometimes okay yeah, yeah. um but um uh, yeah I'm I'm pretty confident in trading because I do it like 15 years. Yeah. So the experience is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it. And um that's why I I could adapt pretty quickly to the to the prop firm space mm -hmm. because um I think it's it's completely different from from normal trading. At Definitely. least how I do it. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. 100% because like essentially you're 
strategy is designed for the problem, right? Yeah. And I know you incorporate a lot in terms of fundamentals into that strategy too. Is there a particular reason for that? Um, not in case of prop firms, but in trading overall. Mm. So I think uh, fundamentals move the markets in the end. Mm. And uh, um, it's it's just too high value to, to leave it out. Mm -hmm. And anything could work in, in trading, but um, it's a tra it's a it's the trade of probabilities. Mm -hmm. So um, the more you can can put on a table um, on your side to to get a better chance in mm -hmm. the end, um, the the more success you will have in the end. I think. Yeah. And um, in case of fundamentals, um, I do it like um, an anal analysis um, in the beginning of the week, like mm -hmm. what's what's ahead, what's already in the price. So I get a basis mm -hmm. in the end, a general basis. Yeah. Um, especially if I only look on gold, like I have to look on USD and gold markets. Yeah. And uh, then I get a basis like, do I want to short gold or short USD or whatever? Yeah. And then uh, I create the strategy, the actual entries around mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's, I think, the, the biggest part because um, if you do high risk, um, you have to look for 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 good entries yeah. and, and good trades in the end. And if it's only technical um it's easy to get to get a, a counter move against you um that makes sense from a fundamental point yes. so you eliminate the the bad trades mm -hmm. in the in that regard Definitely. that's why so so rather than just having technicals alone where then you're ignoring the fundamentals or have no awareness of the fundamentals and then could very easily get caught off guard by them you just make sure you have that sort of understanding first and then build it, the technicals alongside that yeah um, correct and then on top of that, though, in terms of like using the fundamentals, maybe not necessarily purely, you know, added to the prop from strategy, but do you feel like it helps in terms of the volatility aspect? You know, like if you're getting these you know, bigger moves based off the fundamentals? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, um, like I said before, like um, fundamentals move the market. Mm -hmm. and, and if something has to be repriced, mm -hmm. it's not done. Often it's done like in seconds because yeah. of algos. Um, but uh, the move would probably last one two three weeks mm -hmm. on on big shifts like we saw um in gold like the last three weeks yeah um with the shift of the of the fed or the shift of the market accordingly to the fed yeah um about the rate mm -hmm. rate market so um that's the that's the thing like um and uh, because if you want to to have big trades i think that's that's the way to go yeah yeah because um if you just look on on technicals and if any technical strategy or technical analysis would be always 100% correct. Mm -hmm. The market would just move sideways mm -hmm. in the end because yeah. it's support resistance. Mm -hmm. If if it's never broken, like there's no point. Yeah. So um, uh, if if there's a fundamental change in the market, they don't care about about support resistance mm -hmm. or, or trend lines. Like mm -hmm. the move will come in the end. Definitely, definitely. I know what you're saying and. Yeah, in regards to the fundamental side, is there anything in particular that people should be focused on or that you focus on? Mm -hmm. um, so since I'm trading gold, mm -hmm. um, I have to look on USD, so US co economy, mm -hmm. um, all that's attached to it. But um, in general, like if you want to start fundamentals, mm -hmm. I think the, the best way is to, to look at uh, the rate market, what, mm -hmm. what the Fed is doing, because mm -hmm. that's actually where the money moves. Mm -hmm. Like do you move money into the US or out of the US? Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's the biggest mover of all. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's um, employment data, mm -hmm. um, all that stuff. And then after that comes general economic um, health, like uh, GDP, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But um, the main thing is is um, is the rate market yeah. and all that's attached to like inflation. Mm -hmm. That's And that's pretty easy to, to see and analyze. Um, mm -hmm. because it, there's a lot of information out there mm -hmm. um and um yeah that's um that's what what in the end moves mm -hmm. the usd would you say in terms of information out there would it be a case of people making sure they're listening and understanding to the fomc members when they speak in between the meetings um i don't i don't pay attention between that but uh, i read the headlines okay um because um, they can can give insights mm -hmm. in their thoughts, mm -hmm. especially on on the next meetings or the next few meetings. Yeah, but uh, I don't like listen to it like from from just kind of like the bullet points. Yeah, and stuff yeah. After. So um, 
because um yeah that's important that especially from the last meeting mm -hmm. where the big shift came mm -hmm. um it came out of of um the dot plot mm -hmm. so where where the different members of the fed board put their their rate expectations for the next meetings okay. so and that changed mm -hmm. they they put it like um higher for longer and uh, not so fast cuts next mm -hmm. years yeah which was priced in by the market and mm -hmm. that why that's why we we saw the shift in in the usc because mm -hmm the rate cuts has to be pushed out more mm -hmm. and basically because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And then obviously recently we've had some geopolitical um, situations in the world, you know, some war tensions, etc. Uh, how, how does that play into any sort of strategies or, or, or you know, yeah. differences on executing in the markets? Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about our brand new sponsor, Funded Peaks. Now, Funded Peaks is a brand new evaluation firm which is set to release in the coming days. Now, let me tell you, they are here to change the industry. I know what you're thinking, Riz, everyone says that, but let me tell you the facts. They are coming with the biggest max drawdown in the entire industry. It is 12%. So you have 12% max drawdown so you can have peace of mind when you are trading. Not only that, that drawdown is actually balanced-based drawdown. Again, so you can have peace of mind to trade any strategy that you have. On top of that, they're focused on giving you the best trading conditions so you can have peace of mind when you're trading. You can have a max allocation of $600,000 with Funded Peaks alone. And when you get payouts, they will be processed in as little as 24 hours. They are also bringing in the best educators in the trading industry so that they can provide value to their community. And that is only a couple of reasons as to why they are looking to change the industry. A huge announcement is coming into a complete game changer within the industry. The best way to find out is to make sure you click the link in the description below, join the Discord, join the email list, and I cannot wait to see the game change. But for now, click those links. And let's get back to the episode. Definitely plays a, but it's it's more experience. Mm -hmm. So if something like that happens, mm -hmm. you you have certain blueprints mm -hmm. if you saw it before. Like I've been through countless Fed meetings, countless terminals mm -hmm. like um, were you trading flash. during uh, trump President yeah trump? definitely the, all the tweets the random yeah, tweets yeah. that come out yeah i i can remember especially to at one um time very be very in the very beginning like nfp mm -hmm. and the president actually gets it like the day before and afternoon oh really and yeah mm -hmm. and at around that time he tweeted out like a very um positive tweet mm -hmm. so the market jumped on it mm -hmm. and it actually came in a very very high nfp number mm -hmm. so after that every time like one day before was the actual I mean, um nfp move mm -hmm. because of how he tweeted yeah and in the end i think he understood as well and tried to game the market i can imagine yeah, yeah. and then after that like it wasn't a non-changer anymore like mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in the beginning it was 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 crazy and in terms of of war and all that kind of stuff like mm -hmm. um we we saw a good blueprint like um what what could happen now is um from last year yeah when when russia ukraine mm -hmm. thing went off like everything rushes to safety so gold usc is both safety mm -hmm. and um and usually what's what's done is like in the first days there's a big spike in gold mm -hmm. because um everything rushes there and um because of how the the situation could could unfold in yeah. the end like um um is not to evolve all the kind of stuff and mm -hmm. then um pretty pretty fast after that like days maybe or one two days after that um the the market like prices out the the fear again so yeah. um that's why we saw last year the the pushing gold like to 2070 yeah. and then back down pretty quickly yeah even though the the war began really really heavy and 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 get gets worse but mm -hmm. um i think we see the same thing right now mm -hmm. especially on this weekend mm -hmm. right now because um yeah how how the israeli forces go into gaza maybe mm -hmm. maybe not so a lot of uncertainty yeah um especially on over the weekend so we saw a big big move on friday yeah really. and i'm pretty sure it will get priced out on the next week the next week mm. yeah it's interesting because like when these things happen they take up the headlines for i'd say about two to three weeks max and then it just kind of fades into the background yeah and something else replaces it yeah and it's just like a cycle over and over but the fear the amount of fear across you know, even with this one it's very interesting because you would think that the russia ukraine one 
would be would have created more but i feel like this one has created way more fear and tensions between everyday people even though it's much further away and technically not between two superpowers but maybe it's the fact that israel obviously is so connected with the west and then i guess the with palestine obviously being a muslim and an arab country they are then connected to all the east um so maybe it's that maybe that's the the reason why it's maybe you know, create create such a divide it's, it's a it's a very interesting time very interesting time and, but the way i see it is that there's always something more there's always another one there's always uh, and the the truth is the money, it's all about the money where it's flowing really all these events right um and i guess as traders we do you do you feel like you get more desensitized to it because you you recognize the the business element at play versus everyone else just sees the, the headlines you know? mm. Mm. Um I would say no. Mm -hmm. Um because I don't I don't trade because of the events. Mm -hmm. So um but um I just I just look at the price and, and do what's what's mm. necessary. But um mm. I'm not yeah, another war or whatever, like no yeah. not at all. Um but um you have to be careful in the markets on that time. Mm -hmm. That's that's basically it though. So Because anything can happen. Yeah. Right? Mm. Yeah. No, definitely. And then in regards to obviously the prop firm side of things, you know, we discussed off camera very slightly, you know, in terms of uh, I asked you, do, do you trade personal account, right, alongside the prop firms? Yeah, no, um, not anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I uh, stopped um, after I I gave away my broker leg like, and stayed in, as a consultant, mm -hmm. so I hadn't really that much time to trade. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I trade very briefly, but not to to make big money just to to stay in the space mm -hmm. because i that's that's my profession in the end so mm -hmm. um and then uh, when when i saw prop firms like in 2020 um there was this spark again mm -hmm. i would say a uh, very interesting model mm -hmm. um and i understood the model itself pretty mm -hmm. good because mm -hmm. i i knew the the execution side and mm -hmm. i knew the how a broker works in the end so um I instantly thought, yeah, interesting model. I'm, I want to try it, mm -hmm. and um, also a big, big um, opportunity for traders mm -hmm. um, to to make real money out of like way less. Because um, when I when I see back in um, ten years ago with a broker, um, the usual usual deposit was like two hundred, three hundred dollars yeah. per person, mm -hmm. and now you get the fifty k account with that amount of money. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty pretty insane mm -hmm. to me and uh yeah started started props and went went pretty hard in the in the beginning mm -hmm. um and even now <laughs> and uh yeah um to me it, it was a bit easier to start off mm -hmm. because um i could afford it yeah so i could also afford to lose accounts mm -hmm. and i wasn't afraid mm -hmm. and i think it's also my personality yeah. in in and some points um because when i think back when i started trading yeah 15 years ago i wasn't afraid of losing accounts either oh. so not not to a gamble aspect mm -hmm. but more um completely detachment to mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. so um obviously i couldn't afford to lose <laughs> much but yeah. uh, but i wasn't like oh I lost the trade and I'm down a week or so. Yes. No, not It was an impact in the psychology yeah. as hard as it we see it do, does to others. Yeah. Right? But when you look at the the prop model then, is it a case where you can you can see how this can I don't know what the right word would be for it, but like essentially how you can really maximize this tool in a sense, right? While others just see, oh this is how I can just get more capital. Do you see something where this is such I don't, I don't want to say easy, maybe the wrong, maybe it's the wrong word, maybe you can correct me, but this is an easy way to almost like flip cash. Yeah, you can put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, how the models are currently currently in the prop space, mm -hmm. that I don't like it that much. Mm -hmm. That's because um, I always like professionalism mm -hmm. in the end. And if it's just a game, like you can go to a casino as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I... I like to I like the evolvement in in the model. Like mm -hmm. if you think back three years ago, any prop would say, "Oh, you manage our money," mm -hmm. which is not the case. Mm -hmm. And right now, like the shift is away from that. Mm -hmm. And also in between, when funding talent was out and yeah. all the other firms, like they had different models, and they didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and now props are changing it again mm -hmm. from from that experience with them. So and I think 
a lot of props overdoing it mm -hmm. like the how you treat the price how you do it to mm -hmm. be successful in the end and mm -hmm. not funding talent number two mm -hmm. um because of the so execution. from one extreme to the other yeah yeah so now it's the other extreme which is also not good yeah in the end but um i think um from that point business will evolve again mm -hmm. there will be um new aspects to it mm -hmm. that has to be discovered mm -hmm. um i think there there could be done a lot in the end but uh, for for the normal people it's an amazing opportunity in the mm. end and not just a gambling opportunity but props give i think s certain points to to a trader because i think with props a lot more traders put stop loss in the end mm. which didn't on their on their personal accounts mm -hmm. because of the of the daily drawdown yes and uh, that itself is is an accomplishment <laughs> yeah, to the traders true. and uh, then you put up different rules like maybe a few consistent rules mm -hmm. one percent rule two percent rule per trade mm -hmm. so um i think if if we move like two three years from now mm -hmm. and the space evolves it will bring more better traders out mm -hmm. if if it's done right yeah but um you you always have the the fight between props who want to do it that way mm -hmm. and props who are only here for the money because mm -hmm. they are only marketing mm -hmm. so and they are here for for the bad losing traders yes and um put up a lot of promotions like only want to get people on the platform yeah and don't care of, of them what what Beyond happens that. after them yeah and um yeah you have you have the the two sides fighting each other for the for the clients so mm -hmm. the the firm that's more had a has a vision in the in the future it's difficult for them to keep up with with the ones who are just here for for a quick money grab mm -hmm. like yeah that's that's difficult would you say the ones who are here for the future and like uh, as you say sort of it's great for the trader in terms of actually trying to build and have profitable traders would you say it's a case where they obviously will have to i would imagine anyway not obviously but they would have to uh a book or, or copy the traders in some degree um and find a way i know we discussed this ever so slightly just before maybe you can touch on that as well uh but they would have to obviously learn how to a book as well as uh as you say create rules that is designed to help the trader so it's stricter rules so a tr necessarily like the all these traders who right now look at props probably hate that but it's in the benefit of the trader for the long term definitely so yeah that's that's the correct point like overall but i would say there will be never a winning model where you a book a trader mm -hmm. because of the risk it's mm -hmm. like uh, if you if you see it from from the prop side um and you have 10 let's say simple example yeah. you have you have 10 funded traders mm -hmm. each has a 100k account mm -hmm. so for each trader the prop has a risk of 10k mm -hmm. that's be lost but um your stats show even though they are all good good traders mm -hmm. at least 50 percent will lose that mm -hmm. so that's a minus 50k on the prop mm -hmm. and for the prop with let's say 80 20 split to be break even on a trader mm -hmm. the trader has to make 50k mm -hmm. in profit because the prop only gets 10k of the 50k mm -hmm. so then the prop is is break even mm -hmm. so the chance chances that a trader makes in a month 50k of a 100k account yeah very super slim mm -hmm. so every time if you if you a book a trader is is a big risk mm -hmm. and uh, i think always a losing model for props mm -hmm. so i think um they have to to think it differently mm -hmm. um they have to utilize the data in a point which is very tough mm -hmm. super tough if you have a lot of gambling um um aspects to it and with the current rules it's it's nearly impossible um to to utilize the data to an extent where it's it's good for the prop mm -hmm. because um if you just have five percent drawdown rule ten percent max drawdown and that's it mm -hmm. um you you don't have um or it's not that reliable for the prop because the trader could gamble the account like on the next day mm -hmm. and even though they trade uh, they trade like 20 days perfectly fine mm -hmm. the next day could be the could be the day yeah. that's the losing day mm -hmm. and um for that like i think stricter rules is is a given in that mm -hmm. and um 
maybe one percent, two percent rules mm -hmm. per trade, mm -hmm. all the kind of stuff to make the the flow, the data more reliable for the props. So clean and it. in the end, mm -hmm. it also would help the trader because, yeah. good example from myself, um, as I trade very very risky mm -hmm. because of the model. But if the model would change, like um, I would change as well mm -hmm. to a more stricter trader, like mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. like I do on, on my personal. But um, when uh, um, top tier trader mm -hmm. they changed their model like um, mid of this year um, to five lot max per per gold example um, okay. yeah so you could only put a five lot on a 300k account mm. and during that time um, when they changed it I think I I kept the account for three or four months mm -hmm. and get a payout every two weeks wow. so consistently mm -hmm. and I was because I, I did risk way less mm -hmm. than on the other firms and on the other firms like yeah I made some money but I also lost the account with them yeah. and I kept it with them and, and in the end I made much more money with them wow. than with other firms mm -hmm. during that time mm -hmm. and it all came down to consistent low risk good trading mm -hmm. Yeah. so I think in the end even though um, at the beginning if props change to that model there would be an outcry in the industry because people like big big numbers even though only a very very small percentage get mm -hmm. these numbers mm -hmm. um and uh, but uh, if they if yeah it's, i think it's in 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 the nature of the human like if you get restricted you mm -hmm. don't you won't like it but i think in the end it's it's to the benefit of of the trader no definitely i think do you feel like it would be a slow transition like, let's say if a, a prop firm uh, opened a particular challenge with that rule set to begin with so it's not like a shock to everyone's system it's like if you want to go professional route you know improve your trading and maybe potentially the future of these evaluation companies here's the model and then you know as it's, so it's a sort of like getting the traders ready preparing them for something that might be the future of of the whole space do you think that's something that's possible and maybe i would say worthwhile for for evaluation companies to look at um I think it's hard to implement it like on the side mm. because um, then the trader asks, yeah, why should why should I switch now? So mm. I think you you have to to implement it like for the whole company. Mm. Um, and I think FTMO does it as well. They have the one percent rule. Do they? Yeah, not not like written, but if you risk too much, oh, they you, email. you will get an email like, yeah. and anybody does it like. Um, so they also implement it, and that's why I think they they are already on that step mm. they've been doing that a while now yeah actually, yeah. yeah so um i think the transition already happened and uh, it's just very slow to adapt and also like for for the for the companies who are um who are for who are not like mm, as reliable mm -hmm. i would say it's even harder to change because um they make less money in the end mm -hmm and uh, they get better traders and if they don't have the infrastructure behind it to support it mm -hmm. like it's a big risk for the company as well yeah yeah very true very true and do you feel like because obviously when you change models like when you change the challenges you know whether it's the daily drawdown or whether it's the max drawdown or whether it's the leverage or whether it's the profit target the pricing changes you know the the stats and the data all changes as well so do you feel if there was a model designed in this way uh what would what would be the use case then i imagine if you had like a rule of one or two percent risk per trade would then the prices be cheaper or would they be more expensive i would imagine cheap i would imagine cheaper because of the people who would break that rule would still be there um so therefore it would be cheaper because people would probably breach their accounts still but uh, yeah i'm not sure what are your thoughts yeah i think I think it's... Um... Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about the best trading tool on the market, TradeZella. The reason why TradeZella is the number one trading tool that every trader needs is because you can do backtesting, automated journaling, trade replay, in-depth analytics, and so much more. And the greatest part about TradeZella is that it's all automated. All you have to do is connect your MT4 and MT5. It will pull all your data onto the dashboard. You can add playbooks. 
You can just add notes. You can add images from your trades and you can get the insights that is necessary for you to progress as a trader. Now, TradeZella is for absolutely everyone. Whether you're a crypto trader, whether you're a Forex trader, whether you trade prop firms, it is for absolutely everyone. And that is why thousands of traders have signed up using my link here through the podcast. Make sure you use the code RIZ10 for 10% off your monthly subscription or WOR for 20% off your yearly subscription. The link is in the description below. And let's get back to the episode. It depends on the whole infrastructure of, of the company. So what tools do you use? What what uh, providers do you use? Mm -hmm. How much do you pay for that? Mm -hmm. And in the end, it's a calculation in a whole. Mm -hmm. And if if you have and you have to see the data as well, mm -hmm. like how how much can you use the data? Like um, what what we did back then and also how I see it you can use the data is by hatching mm -hmm. and different hatching strategies but you can't just um hatch your whole data mm -hmm. because it's just too much and you have to have like hundreds of millions mm -hmm. so usually what you do is like you you focus on on certain alpha in the data mm -hmm. and uh, maybe hatch it as a 10 percent hatch at certain points so you have to to see how much you make out of the data like the revenue stream second yeah. revenue stream maybe a third revenue stream somewhere else um and that all brings uh, comes into the calculation mm -hmm. and that's how the price of of the the model itself um mm -hmm. should be determined and okay. um yeah uh, but in the end like i think um the evaluation price is always or will always be a big big um thing in the space because in the end you get you get the leverage of a 100k account or 200k account mm -hmm. and and um the money has to come somewhere yeah uh, come and uh, yeah that's is it in terms of data wise is there i, I hear people talk about selling data mm. right to, to other, other firms or whatever maybe is that a use case is that actually you know a income stream is that possible i think so but um, the data has to be good mm -hmm. and right now the data is completely awful mm -hmm. Because as I said, like any trader could gamble away the account the mm -hmm. next day. And and if you go to a hedge fund and say, hey, here's my data, but it's it's unusable for them, mm -hmm. even though they have l very, very um, good quants, good mm -hmm. good analysis, um, like it's it's so hard. Mm -hmm. And even though if you see, if you look at, at Bebo brokers, mm -hmm. for them, it was even hard to, to utilize the data and they don't deal with hundreds of thousands of accounts but only with like two hundred dollar accounts five hundred dollar mm -hmm. accounts thousand dollar so way less risk yeah but in the big scheme it it was also very difficult for mm -hmm. them and you have to have good dealing desk you have to good people who who, who do it and um it's difficult mm -hmm. and um it's just the data with with these the volume of the prop firms mm -hmm. because of the high account sizes mm -hmm. is is so risky to utilize mm -hmm. you have to have a um, very reliable stream there mm -hmm. and that's why i think you can only sell it if um if you have the the rule set for it okay so but if you can sell it then you could also use it yourself yeah so yeah. you you won't want to sell it then, yeah in that sense okay and well i'm thinking of doing something here Right, where it's like a, it's kind of like a, a 101, you know, like kind of like the um, what they call it. Oh, so like a, a kind of like um, behind the scenes, like the deeper side of the industry, the broker side of the industry uh, for dummies, you know, so like me, really. Um, so let's say dealing desk. Could you break down briefly or for like in layman's terms or for like the fifth graders or mindset <laughs> of what do you mean by dealing desk? Okay, so. Um you have a lot of traders mm -hmm. in your company mm -hmm. and each trader trades differently. Mm -hmm. So some risk more, some risk less. Mm -hmm. And then you you have to to separate them into different risk models. Mm -hmm. So the high risk ones, the low risk ones mm -hmm. and the in between. And uh, the dealing desk does this. Mm -hmm. So different different models, maybe also scalper models, non scalper models, mm -hmm. um, swing traders, and you can create different different trading environment for the different groups okay so um what to the benefit of the trader or less mm -hmm. so both both sides are 
it depends on on the the model of the firm mm -hmm. in the end and after that they look the dealing desk look at the groups mm -hmm. how they how they option uh, mm -hmm. how they operate and how they trade and then they decide to forward the trade to the market mm -hmm. or keep it in house mm -hmm. like what makes sense um which is not a bad thing to keep it in house because mm -hmm. in the end benefit to the trader is they have quicker execution mu uh, direct execution mm -hmm. like all the kind of stuff that the benefits to them mm -hmm. but in the end like the 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 risk model shows 70% lose so they keep the money yes and um then they forward the the rest to the to the to the market and in an easy way like they are different liquidity providers mm -hmm. that they have to look at in the dealing desk mm -hmm. and um make sure because you can't just put up like a thousand lots to one liquidity provider mm -hmm. they won't take it mm -hmm. or they will limit you in the in the other end mm -hmm. so they have to be careful like who they send to how much they send to like what bank what other broker mm -hmm. whatever like there's so much to it so, so that's can why they separate a yeah, thousand yeah to different liquidity providers. yeah yeah so so you be safe because mm -hmm. um on the other hand like you you must think you must see like the liquidity provider that you sent to trade mm -hmm. also could be your comp counterpart so they earn money if your traders lose <laughs> so that's the game mm -hmm. in the end there's always a counterpart to your trade mm -hmm. even like it's of course, your yeah. broker mm -hmm. the liquidity provider the bank in the end mm -hmm. so any uh, somebody has to lose yeah. in, in the chain mm -hmm. and more often it's the trader mm -hmm. yeah. definitely uh, and let's do another one in terms of liquidity provider yeah and again layman's terms the fifth graders if they could understand liquidity because uh, to be fair liquidity provider gets uh, thrown out a lot obviously the uh, props use it um, and evaluation brokers use it in terms of this is why you know they try and a lot of the time throw it off to the liquidity provider why you've had this issue you know so would you be able to break down obviously what the liquidity provider you know, definition or what their job role is? Yeah. So um, you have different tiers of liquidity, I would say. Mm -hmm. So the tier one would be your Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan's, mm -hmm. the, the big, big banks. Mm -hmm. Then you have some prime brokers in between mm -hmm. and other brokers, smaller banks, investment funds. So they all seek for, for trades. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you onboard with company A, company B, company C, mm -hmm. different liquidity providers, and um, all have different um, pricing in the end, mm -hmm. they deliver you the price for EURUSD, for example. Yep. So that makes, and the, if you have more than one liquidity provider, you aggregate the price to, mm -hmm. your, to your clients. Mm -hmm. So they get the best or the worst. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, um, you execute the trade with them. Mm -hmm. So they are the counterpart of your firm. Yes. So um, in the end, like, and they could also forward the trade again. Mm -hmm. It's not a given that they only win if you lose. Mm -hmm. So there are so many different things. But a liquidity provider is just, they deliver you the price and you execute the trade mm -hmm. with them. That's it. Definitely. Definitely. I'm hoping, so this is the interesting thing we're doing here, right? Where it could go one or two ways. <laughs> Either people are like, oh, this is too much. I don't want to hear this. But I feel like, because for me personally, I feel like what I try to do in this scenario, it's a uh, positive and a negative, is that I try not to do too much research myself so I can be, I try and put myself in the shoes of the person, the listeners, right? In terms of I have the novice mindset. I don't have the knowledge. So I can ask the questions to get the knowledge, which then hopefully does the same for them. Does that make sense? So either one or two ways. One, they're here like, I don't want to hear this technical stuff. Or two, which I feel like it is going to be the case, is that they're getting knowledge that they don't learn, right? And they don't actively go, because the knowledge is there, right? Like if they wanted to go research this stuff, I'm sure they'd probably Google it and, and probably read some documents and stuff. Um, I've got one more for you, but before we get there, would you say this information about liquidity providers and, and understanding how the orders actually you know, go through and what happens when they place trades, would you say this is actually important information to know? Um, it's important if you want to know who you're dealing with mm -hmm. on either a broker or the prop firm, mm -hmm. like how, and you won't get the, the setup named from them because it's, it's their secret. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, you, if you know what to look out for on the pricing, on how the execution works, mm -hmm. Um, I think you get a, no a good knowledge of how they deal with mm -hmm. clients mm -hmm. and how they deal with you as a trader. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and then you could and in my case i adapt to it yeah so in case of prop firms i don't scalp mm -hmm. like because of the slippage mm -hmm. and i know they must do it to a certain extent mm -hmm. like i understand it i'm not mad mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i don't scalp i don't use any a's i don't use high frequency or anything like pure simple traits mm -hmm. pure simple execution types mm -hmm. um no no small stop losses no mm -hmm. small take profits mm -hmm. very easy trades to just not get caught in in their execution model yeah and um that's how you can can adapt mm -hmm. from firm to firm mm -hmm. if you know how they they operate mm -hmm. and only then you could could do it like if you understand and because a lot of people cry because of this of the slippage mm -hmm. and that's part of of the model itself mm -hmm. and um yeah that's that's pretty important to understand mm -hmm. why things happen and i believe like you know you're more informed then right so then i feel like a part of it is that people don't have this information or haven't taken the time to learn it. So it's not like it's hidden, it's there, but they ta haven't taken the time to learn it. So then when these things happen, they get so emotional because they don't understand what's going on, right? To them, which is interesting, because I feel like there's, do you feel like there's a wave of traders who have only experienced prop models, not really gone to the live markets anymore or tried a, a broker? So they just assume that it should be like trade, I place my trade here, it should enter there yeah you know and then that's therefore they have a warped perception of what the reality of trading is yeah that's a big issue mm -hmm. because i think because um the prop firm model itself like it aims how it's how it's built and, and the people behind it mm -hmm. it aims more at the um unexperienced one mm -hmm. younger traders mm -hmm. because and and it's the nature of it because you utilize little money to get access to big money yeah so um and then you get a lot of inexperienced traders mm -hmm. and um by that also young traders they don't most of them like trade one a one year two years mm -hmm. tried maybe a broker maybe not um so they don't know and i think what what i see is like um a lot of traders see it like a game mm -hmm. like if i put my stop loss here it should execute like that mm -hmm. like and that's not the case that's mm -hmm. not not how how market works and um I would I would say it's be safer to be more uh, to start out with a normal broker mm -hmm. with your own money so you get you go through it, through the pain mm -hmm. as well because you're way more attached to to your own money yeah. than you are to, to the prop firm money so um there's um that's a big point and uh, also it takes time to get to 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 be good at trading like it takes years Mm -hmm. it's not month and also from from the strategies like it's not the one holy grail strategy mm -hmm. out there so because um, if if there would be a strategy to dominate them all like mm -hmm. it would be known by now yes and traders would would use it mm -hmm. and um trading is hard and takes time mm -hmm. so yeah i think a lot of people out there in the business uh, out there in, in the prop business right now they they just think they can start with a prop firm and and make a lot of money but mm -hmm. that's definitely not the case mm -hmm. like um you have to know what what you're dealing with you have to know what you're doing mm -hmm. in trading but yeah because also like they lack experience like you say and uh they they go to the prop firms to leverage and they think like you said they they think that they, it's like they treat it like a game and they think they're going to make a lot of money through this method which they can if they gain the experience, if they think in the right way and they treat it correctly as well. But in majority of people's mindset, or at least I wouldn't say actually their mindset, someone like Kyle, for example, his mindset is definitely, and Paladin, they, they, their mindset is definitely professional trading. Like they have that professional trading mindset and that's their goal and they, they look beyond props probably, right? Um, while majority of people say they want to be a trader, right? They want to be a trader for the next 10 years, 20 years. I want to be managing millions. But then they're not getting... This, they're not learning this knowledge in terms of liquidity providers. Like I, I can, I have a very strong sense. I can put money on it that if I went to Kyle and said, "What's a liquidity provider?" or um, you know, "What's um, uh, you know, uh, a quant, etc.?" He would know, right? Because he actually wants to go down that route. Versus most people who say they do, they won't take the time to learn that information. Is that something that you probably realize as well or see as well? Yeah, definitely. That's that's completely true. Mm -hmm. But uh, because. If you if you're a good trader, mm -hmm. you've gone through several steps. Mm -hmm. Like you actually you're 
you you want to know stuff mm -hmm. and for myself like i always not only in trading but i always want the behind the scene mm -hmm. to to get to get uh, um yeah to 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 get the experience to to uh, know what what's behind it mm -hmm. why is a move happening um why is is why do i get slipped mm -hmm. like in the end like i want to know and that that's how you you build experience mm -hmm. in the end like and that's just the building process mm -hmm. like and i don't stop right now because it's it's always a, a new market tomorrow and mm -hmm. you have to adapt and um definitely and that's why i think all the good traders they gone through that mm -hmm. and a lot of new traders they want an easy route around it mm -hmm. and that's that's not happening mm -hmm. like you you have to go through certain steps to to be successful mm -hmm. in the end do you know when people say trading is simple right you should keep it simple etc right do you feel like it can be simple when you have the knowledge right so you understand the fundamental side you understand this back end all the back end the behind the scenes how things operate then you can really create a simple because you understand that side you understand this side and then you really just need some very small technicals to then execute on that information versus people who have a very complex technical aspect because they lack all the other knowledge do you feel that that's like the comparison? The lowest prices in the entire industry with challenges from just $35 and payouts in as little as five days. The expert challenge is finally here. Get funded up to $100,000 at skilled funded traders. With unlimited trading days and 85% profit split, the expert challenge changes the game. Click the link below to get started today. I want to tell you about the best provider of tools for traders and that is Lux Algo. Lux Algo is the largest provider of free tools on TradingView. You've probably seen them all over TradingView as well for their smart money concepts indicator as well as so many other free resources. Now if you don't know they have also created exclusive toolkits to take your trading to the next level directly on trading. Whether you trade price action, ICT or you want advanced signals and powerful overlays they have all the tools necessary for you to grow. All their tools work on every market. So whether you trade Forex, crypto or stocks, it does not matter. Now through the podcast, you can get 20% off using the link in the description. So make sure you click that and let's get back to the episode. I wouldn't compare it, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think any system could work. Mm -hmm. Like it has to be tailored to you. Yeah. Um, and from for me, like traders always search for for the best system out there and just want to copy it mm -hmm. and i think that doesn't work mm -hmm. like if you if you copy my system like one to one mm -hmm. you wouldn't make the same same money or the same um same end results than me because you will always see the market different mm -hmm. and also but let's say ict mm -hmm. yeah very very complex i would say mm -hmm. um strategy or sm smt all the, all the complex strategies like um they could work mm -hmm. and i think they they work for a lot of people yeah um but um in the end you have to be um in the spot to execute it like mm -hmm. for myself i i'm not good on trend following strategies mm -hmm. and that i have to accept and i could never execute a trend following strategy as someone who does it like the, his whole life mm -hmm. and is is fully into it like mm -hmm. from from his persona per se mm -hmm. so um you have to find your edge like what what you want to do mm -hmm. and um how how you see the market like if you see a naked market mm -hmm. what what do you search the f at, at the beginning like mm -hmm. what's what comes to your mind and then you you search a strategy for that mm -hmm. very easy strategy and build on that mm -hmm. just keep it keep it with the strategy and um like also with with complex technical strategies yeah if you if you have it nailed down over years and you add maybe one or two more layers like fundamentals it can only benefit it mm. in the end um because maybe with the fundament like i do with the fundamentals i i don't get in bad trades i don't mm. get caught in bad trades that maybe i would if i just executed That's technical it, yeah so in the end the trader has to find his strategy mm -hmm. and uh, um there are a lot of things out there and i think anything could work mm -hmm. easy complex it's just down to the trader and his mental state his um psychological mm -hmm. straight state that's that's the main reason why you um make money or you don't because mm -hmm. i think the the strategy itself is like 
maybe only 10%, 20% of the trading. Mm -hmm. The rest is just how you see the market, how you proceed in the trade. Mm -hmm. Do you revenge trade? All the kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. there's a whole list. You could good go down like um, why you lose a trade. Yeah. And, if, and most of, of the time is uh, psych psychological factor. Mm -hmm. And then you, you eliminate it and go by that. And yeah, it's just um, repetition mm -hmm. in the end. Would you say, from your experience of uh, obviously working and owning uh, brokerages, uh, and obviously your experience in the market as a whole, there's always been the fear of people when they say, you know, if this strategy gets known, you know, it won't work anymore. Is that a, a real sort yeah. of sentiment? Yeah, but it has to be known, but pretty widespread. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you say ICT is on that level or no? I don't think any big retail trading strategy is on that level. Um, because retail market is super small mm. and the prop firm market is even smaller. <laughs> so um, compared to, to the whole scheme. But yeah, the, like when I think back, um, maybe like 10, 8 years ago, mm -hmm. there was this this whole EA thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody was searching for EAs. Yeah. And there was one, one EA, I think it was million dollar pips or something like that, mm. that a lot of people use. Yeah. And... Uh, it 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 worked quite well in the beginning mm -hmm. but um stopped working at a at a certain point yeah. because um you deal with liquidities and liquidities can be often big banks mm -hmm. and they put a lot of money and and um manpower into developing quants mm -hmm. and developing their own systems mm -hmm. and in the end they want to make money mm -hmm. so they they do what what needs to be done to to push the price and if they see an alpha like oh this is one strategy that always executes like that mm -hmm. well they will counter that mm -hmm. at some point mm -hmm. but i think yeah if ict is an example if if it's such a good strategy that i don't know five hundred thousand people will use it mm -hmm. in the end yeah it's a risk to the strategy mm -hmm. yeah also mm -hmm. if you if you develop your your own eas or so um, so why is there not this one or two very good EA that make a lot of money? Mm -hmm. Because in the end, like, A, they are not for sale, mm -hmm. and B, they are not out there. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it would be gone in a week or two weeks, <laughs> yeah. because it would be counted. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you mentioned quant there again, so we're going to do another, like, uh, you know, definition for dummies. <laughs> um, so quants, like, can we just break down, obviously, that role, what it, what it does within the industry, and and you know how it operates? Yeah, it's. I think it's um it's not um it's not a big deal for for retail trading. It's mm -hmm. more a banking, investment banking okay. thing. So um, they hire a lot of psychology guys, mm -hmm. technical guys, mm -hmm. and they put all these together to to see. Um, the technical structure behind a market. Mm -hmm. So more or less sentiment, all the kind of stuff is put in there. Mm -hmm. And um, then you you bring out um, for the investment bank, for example, mm -hmm. you, you have different models that based on all these kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they have systems to execute this. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you won't do it like as a retail trader you won't do it as a as a broker mm -hmm. it's more investment the banking highest. yeah okay. they they look at quants definitely and uh is there anything though and before we move on anything that in terms of what retails you know could be um favorable to them to know anything that you can think of that maybe you know they will be looking past right now and not learning you know similar to what we've gone over already is there anything else that comes to mind i think it it's pretty detailed already mm -hmm. um but uh in the end, like for for retail traders, I think the most important thing is um, right now, especially with the evaluation firms, yes. all this kind of stuff, um, is um, who you're trading with. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think the industry is changing right now, so you should understand what what's behind the companies, yeah. like who is behind the companies, mm -hmm. what's the goal, and not just look blindly on what they're saying or what's out in, mm -hmm. in social media, but um, compare the companies, compare the the knowledge of the companies, mm -hmm. would say, like, because because of the industry is changing, um, do you trust the owner of the company mm -hmm. to navigate these waters mm -hmm. with 
all the US situation with MFF. Mm -hmm. Like, if you think um, four months before, MFF was praised as the best prop firm ever. Mm -hmm. And the next day, they are gone. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the end, like, do you trust your firm mm -hmm. to navigate these waters right now? Mm -hmm. That's that's the biggest step you you have to do right now, I think, um, to to be safe. Definitely. Definitely. And you've, do you think that in terms of traders, there's a lot of fear, right? Ever, ever since this MFF situation, there's a lot of fear that people are like, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if this firm will do this or continue to be this way or if they're good or bad. Do you feel like the fear is misplaced and that like you, it's kind of reflecting on what you just said there is you should know this, you know, you research mm. and then the fear can dissipate, you know, um, rather than just kind of not doing anything and just being in this fearful state, which only impacts your trading, probably, you know, completely, uh, sort of disables your trading, if anything. Um, would you say that, do you see that in terms of like a, a fearful tone within the industry? Definitely. Yeah. Do you think it's warranted though? Um, I think so. Mm -hmm. And I myself, like, I'm very cautious on some firms right now mm -hmm. um, because I want to see how it develops. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fear is definitely out there. And um, But it's, it's a very young industry. So yeah. the industry itself has to learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And same like, when when I started the broker ten years ago mm -hmm. in 2012, um, the broker business what was different mm -hmm. at that time and um, it adapted and also today is is completely different like then back mm -hmm. then and I think um, the prop firms also change mm -hmm. and that's how uh, that's why the fear is is out there because of the F MFF situation mm -hmm. yeah it's it's super bad but um, in my opinion because if I see the 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 behind the scenes mm -hmm. of MFF, I think they were pretty good. And um, all the stuff with the with the documents, like the the, um, the talks between them, mm -hmm. to be honest, like, I think uh, you see that in a any firm, mm -hmm. like, because uh, the model is like that. Mm -hmm. And um, it, the model has to change first yeah. to change to change the, the players in it. Yeah. And that's, what we talked before like with the different rule sets maybe yeah. utilize the data more mm -hmm. so do you feel like the mff situation essentially was inevitable whether it's them or any other of the players it just so happened to be them um and yet you know it was always going to happen and then you know it's about who transitions it's like it's like you said with the brokerages like when you got into it it was you know things were happening then it's very much different now and probably will be very much different even for brokers in 10 years time and it's the natural progression, natural progression of any industry, especially new industries, yeah, like cryptocurrency. When that was first started, there's probably like certain patterns then and, and then things had to change and, and new players came in board and then some players left and, you know, it's completely changing. And even to this day, it's still very dynamic. And, and um, I imagine, you know, I think every industry is probably the same in that respect, in that regard. Is that something you would agree with? Absolutely. Like look at, look at the banking crisis 2008, mm -hmm. like Lehman. All that stuff and mm -hmm. and they evolved also from that mm -hmm. so and have different different liquidity um things they have to to do mm -hmm. all all that stuff like it's always changing you mm -hmm. have always to to adapt to that if you're a big the biggest bank out there or the smallest broker mm -hmm. like and and for the firms right now here um the mff situation i think was definitely yeah they it it had to come at some point mm -hmm. um I thought, and I think they thought as well, they would get a warning, like mm -hmm. funding um, talent mm -hmm. did with the um, Canadian authorities, yes. and they could say solve it like behind the continue, scenes. Yeah. And uh, the the bad thing is like um, U.S. Um, authorities, they usually they act first, and and the firm can explain later, and <laughs> that's that's horrible for for prop firm because yeah. In terms of like the the scrutiny and yeah. the press, yeah. What do you think, though? Do you think they'll be back? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think they have a good case. Mm -hmm. um, I think they get fined for for all the um, um, the bad things they put on the website, like um, the live trading, yeah, real funds. all that stuff. Like, they I think that was really poor judgment. Because I, I don't know, were they the only ones doing that? As far as I know, I feel like they were the only ones. You know, in terms of like the big, the big boys, the, mm. the ones at the top they were the only ones pretending it was live funds or promoting it as live funds. I'm pretty sure, every, I know FTMO says demo. I know their thing is that, or that used to be their thing, like we copy it to a live, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure everyone else would 
even if it's not there on the front page or like now it's obviously simulated etc um but even if it's not there on the front page it was always in the document demo 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 wow obviously they actually had live ticker on the metatrader live you know you're you know, you're using our funds. If we win, we you win. If you, you know, if you win, we win. If you lose, we lose. Sort of thing. Um, were they the only ones doing that? I think uh, almost all were doing like until 2021. Okay. And then the industry changed pretty pretty fast. Was that the funding talent? One? Yeah. Yeah. After that, the industry changed, and yeah, they they were slow on that. I thought as well. They left but it for a long time. Yeah, I think, but I think they they were confident that they could change once the authorities came. Uh, but, oh, okay. Um, but the U.S. authorities, they have this strong consumer protection thing. So even though if you st if you say in, in your contracts that it's demo, mm -hmm. if you portray it on your website mm -hmm. um, that it's live or whatever, like I think they they won't care about the, the contract because they are consumer protective. Yeah. And very so in the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's why... I think um, that's the danger in, in, in the US for that firm because we are still in a gray market. Yeah. Like it's not a broker. Yeah. It doesn't accept deposits. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't forward any trades. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a good thing because I don't trust a firm that says, oh, we A book anyone or we forward your trades so you trade live. Mm -hmm. Because if they would do so, they would be a broker because they would act as a as a live market participant mm -hmm. on behalf of the client. Mm. And that's up to regulation. Mm -hmm. So, and then they ha don't have a regulation. So either they are lying <laughs> or regula regulators would come and close them down. Mm. So either it's way, <laughs> either yeah. way, it's bad for the mm -hmm. client. So I don't trust anyone who, who says like, um, or portrays it like that. And um, overall, um, the MFF situation, I think, helps the industry to understand mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. the behind the scenes because mm -hmm. since then, there's this whole cleanup. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Do you feel if they did come back, for example, do you think people would trust them after? Obviously, because the the hardship with the documents and it being so public is that you have all the you know Bugatti was bought, mansions bought, these things were said in such an aggressive way. Do you think people? I know the the interesting thing is my assumption would be like no one would trust them. Right. Then I think back and I think there are a bunch of people who've got all these accounts with them and they won't really care because they'll get those accounts back. So there might be like a little balance there. But what do you think? Um, if they would be back for myself, I would trade with them mm -hmm. because I had no issues with them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I think they were one of the best firms out there. Mm -hmm. Any payout, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. And um, but I think the their reputation is so bad mm -hmm. yeah, um, because of that and especially because they they are now known for the guys who slip mm -hmm. who slip them to death yeah and <laughs> and that's that sticks like mm -hmm. um imagine if they reopen yeah and um anything happens in the market like yeah, yeah. usual market conditions yeah they will get get thrown under the bus yeah. like immediately mm -hmm. so i think there's there's almost no way back because mm -hmm. the one thing i never actually traded with them because literally for years everyone has said that the slippage is really bad before this before the uh, articles and everything everyone mm -hmm. the general tone i always used to hear about them was that their slippage was terrible um i would imagine more so for scalpers no doubt but yeah i always heard that so i just stayed away from them the whole time i heard they pay i know people paid out and mm -hmm. all that but i just thought yeah i don't want to experience that for myself like i i think uh the execution time and and the slippage was was quite good mm. i can 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 tell you like other firms right now they are operating right now they have like the worst slippage ever mm -hmm. compared to them mm -hmm. so i thought they had a great model mm -hmm. um and i think they they were very experienced mm -hmm. on on the top level side mm -hmm. so they, they i think they knew what they they doing yeah um they had a good setup they, they grew a lot. Yeah. They grew a lot. They actually, I think, before they went down, which is very unfortunate, they'd taken the number one spot in terms mm -hmm. of like the amount of traffic they were getting, which is an incredible feat, you know, especially FTMO dethroning the king. But then the king <laughs> came back and took over. Um, it's, you know, we mentioned earlier about in terms of uh, strategies for prop firms, uh, scalping. Now, I don't, I don't want to, I don't know an actual figure, you know, and a statistic to say the majority of people are scalpers. Right? I can't say that. 
but from my general experience of speaking, you know, seeing, observing traders, and and uh, you know, especially with like SMC, ICT, and and just generally as well, uh, mainly with, within that sort of sector, if you will, or those strategies, majority of people are scalping, and they're on these prop firms. So, what, what are your thoughts, or what would you not advise them? But what would your thoughts be in terms of these people who are doing that, and then they're the ones who are experiencing the slippage. Yeah. They are experiencing, it. and then they're getting obviously annoyed. They're getting. Um, yeah, they're having these issues, having to tweet and try and expose prop firms and so on and so forth. Like, what are your thoughts, when, uh, you know, as someone who actually has observed it, understood, hey, scalping isn't really the best thing to do on these firms. What would you say in regards to that? Um, well, scalping is not not only bad with those firms, but also with a personal account. It's, mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's the, the possibility to make money with scalping is just, is just lower mm -hmm. than, than trading different way. Mm -hmm. Um, so trading itself is is very difficult though you will i i i don't um know many traders who who make their money with day-to-day -day investment mm -hmm. it's more you you make money with long-term investment mm -hmm. that's how you make money and scalpers is not even day-to-day -day investing it's like the Out mini now. game yeah. um into the day so it's it's insanely hard mm -hmm. but i get it i started as well like that mm -hmm. because um when you start out, like you think, oh, I'm going into the market, get out quick, make a bit of money mm -hmm. um, or risk more. I make like and they, they just want to, to get rich quick. Mm -hmm. And that's just not not the game here. So and especially with with prop firms, they have to guard themselves mm -hmm. from from scalping or from over aggressive scalping. Let's mm -hmm. say let's put it that way or high frequency trading, which is also which doesn't work in, in the real market as well, mm -hmm. because the brokers would, won't let you. Yes. <laughs> and uh, um so um they they try to overplay the game mm -hmm. and um they get caught up in in slippage and bad market market executions all that stuff and it's just not worth it but mm -hmm. i get it why people do it because it's just the greed yeah. and the greed is is destined to fail in mm -hmm. in these markets because it, if, if it would be so easy to get in and out mm -hmm. like if you do um roulette like mm -hmm. you have 50 50 percent percent but mm -hmm. the difficulty is um when you get out um when you stop the the ball from rolling yeah. and it's black or red so um that's the difficulty like we all start with 50 50 mm -hmm. but i think scalping isn't necessarily the the point where you shift it in your favor mm -hmm. because it's just too difficult mm -hmm. and in terms of like the scalability of scalping um, I think I, I can't remember who I was having the discussion with. I think it was the Darwin X CEO, where he was saying how like certain strategies, once on scale, they don't work anymore. They're not they're not efficient. Is, is scalping essentially one of those? Like if obviously you know, you're talking low stop losses, you're talking higher lot sizes because of the low stop losses. And then once you're trading into the millions, maybe tens of millions, I imagine you know in terms of execution, it's just not possible. Yeah. Yeah, as we talked before about liquidity, like mm -hmm. um, there are no thousand lots like trades constantly for for a few pips scalping. Like it doesn't work like that, mm -hmm. especially for the broker, and they won't allow it mm -hmm. because um, if I send a thousand lots to a, to a liquidity provider, they will limit me to the extent that um, they won't accept it, mm -hmm. and then I have to to register my 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 trades with them, which is a delay. It's not instant anymore, mm -hmm. so I don't forward it. So there's a big risk. So brokers won't let you. So that's why high frequency trading, all this insane scalping. Mm -hmm. So demo backtests in the tens of millions, as you said, like it's 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 not possible mm -hmm. unless you're trading with the with the environment for it. Mm -hmm. But then we're talking hedge fund level, other executions, other other connections to the market, direct mm -hmm. executions to to certain liquidities or whatever. Like it's it can be done, but it's nothing that a retail a trader yeah. has to be yeah. <laughs> worried about. Like, definitely. And in terms of like hedge funds, you mentioned it there. In terms of hedge funds, in terms of like a retail trader, what would there be if they wanted to trade for a hedge fund? A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people say that's their goal. What is that process like? Is it something where a retail trader who hasn't done a degree in finance or anything like that can do it? Or is it literally there is a specific route that has to be taken? Um, usually, like for 99.9% .9 <laughs> <laughs> it would be the finance way mm -hmm. so you start on on uh, big banks mm -hmm. you work your way up 
and then uh, usually the the hedge fund managers come from the big banks so mm -hmm. they they get out like after 10 years or whatever and then they find big investors okay. so um if you think like that you're a forex trader anywhere mm -hmm. and uh, trade for one year or two year and have a track record for maybe two years which mm -hmm. the most don't mm -hmm. um and then someone comes by and invests in you five, mil five million or more. Mm -hmm. No, no, nobody would, would put that money into Forex mm -hmm. for itself, like because it's it's a high risk market. Mm -hmm. Also le leverage like, no, there's no way. And for the very few Forex trader, retail trader who are actually like insanely good, mm -hmm. I think there is a way, but um, it's, it's very difficult, mm -hmm. but I think there there could be done some some steps, mm -hmm. especially with with the models that we have right now with these evaluation firms. Mm -hmm. I think they are the the stepping stone to that maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. So, um, especially now we're talking just trading data, mm -hmm. but if we talk traders itself, mm -hmm. and if if the model itself like is is built around that that thought. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there there could be things to be done, good things, mm -hmm. and um, which is also better for the trader again mm -hmm. and and for the for the trading data, mm -hmm. because if the incentive is not just to make huge amounts of money in um, the first trading month mm -hmm. that you have with the firm, but more so to build a track record mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Um, the trading data gets better because yeah. the traders don't risk anymore like mm -hmm. the, the huge loss. Term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you think it like that and put a, a whole system that's maybe not focused on one month mm -hmm. but six months mm -hmm. or a year, then you you unleash the real potential of these firms that mm -hmm. nobody does right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I think there could be done something really great in mm -hmm. the future. Have you thought about yourself? Because you have all the knowledge, you have the experience of actually going through the process as well. Have you thought about yourself uh, you know, opening or, or operating one yourself? Definitely. Since I, I saw FTMO the first time, mm -hmm. because uh, actually we we had something like this, something like that mm -hmm. planned in 2014, mm -hmm. um, but it was too difficult because it was too playful. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, since I saw FTMO, I thought yeah. This is a great model. Mm -hmm. I I want to know about about it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I want to start one. Um, but I want to. If I start one, I want to do it differently. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be just another prop firm. Mm -hmm. But like all the stuff that we talked about right now, I think that's in my mind. Like that could be done. Mm -hmm. But it has to be like it has to be thought through from from A to C. Yeah. And um, not just open and work it out. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not me. That when i when i founded the broker it always has to be um to it it has to to have value mm -hmm. in the end mm -hmm. for myself and also for the trader yeah. because back then a lot of people brokers so i wanted to have a platform that's actually really good really good execution mm -hmm. like the best i can get all this stuff but just to to benefit everybody mm -hmm. that's and that's always my Mindset. my thing yeah and um also with props or with the future future firms mm -hmm. um yeah i th i think about it but uh, it's difficult mm -hmm. because um also with mff like um there's um there it's difficult to 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 deal with other players right now in the mm -hmm. industry like if it's brokerages service providers yeah. all that stuff because it's and also the how the props are operating right now or most of them is um is not to benefit them mm -hmm. with with these partners mm -hmm. because if you if you go out on twitter mm -hmm. and banter and after that you have to um, negotiate with liquidity providers mm -hmm. yeah good luck with that <laughs> i mean you see like i what i want to see in the business is to get more professional mm -hmm. as a whole mm -hmm. and for that i think it has to be flushed out first mm -hmm. or purged and um evaluate and and um get to the next next um step yep yeah mm -hmm. definitely do you feel like is it possible for firms who are operating right now to make that transition is it possible that they can start to do that 
even if they the past is different in terms of like maybe they were very active on socials and you know were very in, you know, engaging with the community or having these beefs or you know this controversy should i say um and they have these different challenges and models etc and conditions whatever it may be is it possible for these firms to change now or do you feel like it just has to be a new wave that comes in it's us you're know, taking out the old mm. in, in with the new or are they able to adapt i think they are able they have uh, i think they have the liquidity for it definitely <laughs> the question is do they have um, the knowledge mm. because that's key at mm-hmm. the point because you don't go just to some to some firm mm-hmm. and tell them hey set me up with with these tools mm-hmm. or these connections because you have to do it yourself mm-hmm. if you want to have ownership of it like you have to do it and um you can't rely on on third party providers mm-hmm. in the end because there's so much to it and you have to know what you're doing mm-hmm. and um that's i think the biggest issue right now mm-hmm. with these firms i think a lot of them are trying mm-hmm. to change or doing better mm-hmm. but um yeah the the knowledge part is is a big big um hindrance in in mm-hmm. in that regard do you think it's similar to what we were talking about earlier you know how, like traders don't understand like the back yeah. end of brokers so like a lot of these firms even ones that aren't traders some some have a benefit of being traders so they get the trading experience side um but then there's the ones who aren't traders and they haven't worked in brokerages or at least have knowledge of brokerages and then therefore they literally just a business owner uh, a ceo an entrepreneur and that's it um do you think that's the issue yeah yeah a lot of them are just marketers in the end mm. i think mm-hmm. um because especially with with these firms right now there are just so many third party providers who work with these firms mm-hmm. and usually they do the heavy lifting mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of firms just are for the front end mm-hmm. that's how i see some firms yeah um also how how the ceos talk mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff because if you know then you know mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely no yeah, i understand and let's go back into sort of the your trading then in terms of the the prop firms right and the evaluation companies or vice versa um in terms of obviously we've got the profit side 2.5 million you know in withdrawals uh well, how much is cost is is there like a cost on the other side of that obviously in terms of how much expenditure has been definitely so um as i said i take a very aggressive approach mm-hmm. um but you only can do it if you have a certain bank Mm-hmm. So I had it from the beginning so I had a head start mm-hmm. so to say and wasn't very attached to to any accounts I just um think okay the model is cool I want to get money out of the model mm-hmm. but um I also saw the risk of the model so mm-hmm. I'm not here for long term that's that's a good point to okay. to say so you coming into it you knew yeah. you observed it and because of your knowledge uh, and experience within the industry yeah. I think it allowed you to say okay this is interesting this yeah. is an opportunity it's a short term opportunity at best that's why and um i think i i was at the right place like because of, i traded with funding talent mm-hmm. and then that happens and the prop tier in australia that happens yes. so i got a lot of payouts denied because mm-hmm. they they had liquidity issues so i was Just right in observing yeah, yeah so um the approach was was right in the first place mm-hmm. and uh, made a lot of money with that and usually the the ratio that i see with buying challenges mm-hmm. and i fail a lot of them mm-hmm. until i get a payout mm-hmm. it has to be positive mm-hmm. and for this year for example the ratio is around 1 to 9 so every wow. dollar i spend with prop firms mm-hmm. i get 9 dollar out wow would you say that you having that understanding is very important though, to how you, for it to be successful in terms of you understanding hey this some you know the the risk to reward of it you know the 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 multiplier of like this is how much i'm spending but this is the reward on the back end of it is that what actually allows it also to have that insight to also be successful at that i think so and uh, but it's it's not for for everyone mm-hmm. i would say because as i said you you have to have your certain bank to mm-hmm. to do it like that but if i would advise someone who started out right now mm-hmm. and wants to do it that way <laughs> i would say okay start out slow mm-hmm. and then build your bank mm-hmm. like build your 10k 20k then step up on the challenges to bigger challenges mm-hmm. and and just um 
widen your portfolio in that in that regard and then you can risk more and but um how i trade with the prop firms or how i traded with them in the past through two years three years um it's very difficult because it's so high risk mm -hmm. so if something goes wrong it it goes wrong <laughs> very fast and, mm -hmm. and very very heavy mm -hmm. so um and for that you need you need to to know what you're doing mm -hmm. like to an extent that you you are very profitable on on your own account on your yeah. private account mm -hmm. um so if you if you're not pretty confident on that level yeah you shouldn't do it on the prop firm level as well like shouldn't step up the the risk you should just keep it slow mm -hmm. keep it steady and that's that's i think the the way most people should go mm -hmm. um because if you if you look on the payout side there are not that much that um get to the higher payout stages yeah, so true. um you have to play your mm -hmm. your your percentages because in the end like it's the same in sport you you have people who are on the very very top yeah and they earn immense amount of money mm -hmm. but um you have a lot of players also in the first leagues mm -hmm. who earn also a lot but maybe not that much yeah and in terms of the uh, payouts what are some of the notable payouts in terms of size that you've had um the biggest one was with tft mm -hmm. i think it was over 250k wow i had a lot of payouts with uh, mff mm -hmm. yeah, of course. i traded double accounts like two ta two times 300k mm -hmm. so yeah. usually it was like 60 70k per account mm -hmm. um i would have with funding talent on near the 100k Mm -hmm. And that got denied. Like uh, the prop chair also denied me on hundred twenty k. So usually, when when I receive a payout, it's usually on on the. When you had that TFT one, there were you yeah. worried? Were you worried that that's a that's a large amount? Um, that they that they actually pay me? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worried on on any payout <laughs> unless it's FTMO and MFF. Wow. Because these are the firms who never checked me i, I guess on the payout mm. because um i think they have systems in place before they see all yeah. yeah and and i had never issues like i um the the withdrawal request um came in and i received the payout like the next or or the day after mm -hmm. and with all other firms every every single payout from top tier to everyone it was like almost like one two weeks waiting time wow checking time mm -hmm. all that stuff and i'm fine with it like mm. because i know i know what i traded mm -hmm. and uh, it was within the rules mm -hmm. everything was fine mm -hmm. y they could copy me like one to one per hand mm -hmm. and would they make would make the money um so i wasn't worried that they find something mm -hmm. um but more like okay they they are not liquid enough to to pay those sums to yes. a single person mm -hmm. even though they would be in the grand scheme but yeah um yeah and and that happened as well have you had that have you, yeah. so as i say have, you know since uh since being more public have you had any sort of uh issues any any sort of props really yeah yeah you want to name you want to <laughs> target them right now nah. <laughs> i'm not, i'm not that kind of guy yeah, but no and and i understand it like um mm. it's a high risk model but if if they want me to change Mm -hmm. like to to their model to to be more conservative like their rules. in yeah, yeah they should they should change the rules like one yeah. percent rule or whatever mm -hmm. and and just and openly not just in in secret behind because i yeah. also had firms that that wrote me behind and oh no you have to to do it like that I, way I you have to do it like oh minimum one percent um and you have to be in a range of of lot sizes so you don't you can't Consistency like 15 yeah. 15 lots and then five lots no yeah. you have to be in which is kind of mad and if someone messaged me like that i know they are scamming because mm. uh, they they're not after some some good traders to mm -hmm. that make money because they they know okay if i put certain rules like 98 percent will will lose it yes yeah. it's interesting it's very interesting because it's uh, such a shame though obviously you know being what was the decision to sort of do like interviews and, and be public and yeah um i like the the interviews that i did mm -hmm. because they are different from the usual promotion interviews mm -hmm. and uh, as i said in all what i i'm doing like in the past and now 
it always have to have some value yes. to to the traders out there mm -hmm. to help them understand. And if I do just a 10 minute, 15 minute promotional video to promote the firm, oh, I got the payout. <laughs> there's no value to, to anything of that, yes. just for the firm. Yes. So that's why I turned down anyone until really? until now, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. And I think uh, so many people have no doubt taken away a lot from the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I've learned a lot things to think about for sure um before we go though i want to ask you just a couple of things which is uh before before the brokerage were you trading before that yeah like on a personal level yeah about four years yeah so was that the first sort of in terms of the the trading industry was that what it was first to you as a trader yes yes yeah. because um um i was fed up with with the brokerage business right there mm -hmm. um at the time so um again like i want to get more value mm -hmm. um and uh, also i'm always interested in in the institutional side mm -hmm. um way before like banking stuff mm -hmm. um always interested me so and after trading three to four years in the beginning which is super tough like <laughs> the first three years yes. insanely tough mm -hmm. um i i wanted to be more professional yes and i also wanted to change the risk okay so the n dynamic of the risk so Or the, as a trader, I risk my own money. I risk my trading mm -hmm. on the institutional side, on the broker side. What I, I like to build stuff like mm -hmm. um, business development is mm -hmm. that's how I learned it. Like that, mm -hmm. um, that that's that's my passion, Definitely. and I think I like it more than trading in the end. Mm -hmm. And um, to to do this stuff, to to come up with new ideas, mm -hmm. um, which benefits both sides. Mm -hmm. So. The business and the traders yes so that that was a lot of fun mm -hmm. back then and why step away from it um because it, it was a lot and especially i'm from from germany yes so um the next step back then would be to get more regulation more licenses mm -hmm. out on underworld and it, it's so tough and also money wise it's it's heavy so mm -hmm. we would have need um needed some some big investors Oh. um to to get to the next step mm -hmm. so in the end and the i i did the brokerage um below a, a german investment bank mm -hmm. so i if to go to the next step i would need to cut it um get out of there get my own licenses anywhere um that was just too much mm -hmm. in the end and um i it was a good time there mm -hmm. and then i i leave it to them mm -hmm. stayed as a consultant mm -hmm. was very happy with that and Yeah, the the as I said, the FTMO part when I discovered them in 2020, all the prop industry, I think it, it there was the spark again mm -hmm. that I maybe want to do something like that. But back then, um, three years ago, um, the industry wasn't ready for that mm -hmm. because you need certain players in the industry, mm -hmm. not not as a, the prop firm, but yeah. as the the third party providers behind the scene. Yeah, and unless and i have a vision mm -hmm. from a firm mm -hmm. that i want if i build one I w um it should look like a certain way mm -hmm. and i have some certain players in mind mm -hmm. that i want to bring in mm -hmm. and if they are not ready to support this mm -hmm. i have a hard time to doing it because i don't want to be another prop firm i want Same to do it as, like yeah. the next step yes and yeah that's that's tough definitely <laughs> No, no, 100%. Like innovation is, right? Mm -hmm. And innovation takes risk and innovation takes patience, I think, most of all. And then believing in the vision is what I've seen. Um, and a lot of the time you invest time, energy, without knowing if it's going to pull off. And then I believe it with the right intention, based on, based on what you've said in, throughout your journey anyway, in terms of the value uh, that can be provided, I feel like, you know, it, it comes full circle. Something happens, a chain of events happens magically, universe, God, whatever it may be, it aligns for the person with the right intention. And that's what I truly believe. Um, and I think, you know, the way the industry seems to be going, it seems there's going to be a space for you opening up. Um, one last, uh, one question in regards to that, actually, um, if you were to start your own firm, uh, obviously you're going to do it differently on, on the things that we've already discussed. But in terms of like marketing that firm, would you still go down a route of, not a similar path because obviously you know in terms of like you said professional route but would you have say affiliates with 
key players in the space as it is in traders um, and are things along them lines like the, the usual things or would there be a different sort of route in that side as well I think um, could be mm -hmm. but um, the the front end would more or less look like the same mm -hmm. because um, the the whole idea is centered around unexperienced players to get them in with mm -hmm. low low amounts of money mm -hmm. to to leverage it mm -hmm. and but um, I think the long term goal is is to 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 get these players mm -hmm. and build them to professionals in mm -hmm. the end mm -hmm. and um, a lot of them would make it mm -hmm. some of them won't mm -hmm. some uh, yeah it's it's an in in between there um, and um, but uh, also if you are more professional and you open a whole new path you would obviously get an, uh, other other players as well mm -hmm. like uh, some who who don't look at prop firms right now as as a as a path like because it's it's just um it's not for them because they they manage huge amounts of mon money mm -hmm. like maybe not not um investor money but their own money mm -hmm. and it doesn't make sense for them to to risk prop firm model mm -hmm. or invest in a prop firm model so i think there's both mm -hmm. or can be both mm -hmm. but um i think for now like the the front end won't won't change much yeah. so it's it's the same same stuff interesting interesting and there's one question i actually asked you before the podcast which i think was very interesting which was if the props were to go would you still trade would you still go to you know, trade your personal account for example no i wouldn't trade. um i think i would go back to to brokerage business mm -hmm. because that's what what i like that's my passion mm -hmm. i like to to do it the in-betweens between different different parties mm -hmm. um behind the scene that's um that's what i like yeah. and um i think while trading 15 years now i'm a bit fed up i think mm -hmm. especially with props mm -hmm. it's 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 even harder mm -hmm. and and you have to put more more work in it mm -hmm. I, for me at least yeah and um the past three years were quite successful but mm -hmm. also quite stressful yeah and um that's why if if they're gone now I think I would completely shut down trading for mm. myself and mm. go institutional way all all the way. Well, you know, people are going to be shocked. <laughs> what was he saying? I feel like, and we'll, uh, we're coming towards the end now anyway, so we'll, we'll go into like quick fire questions. Uh, there's one question that I ask every guest, right? It's a little bit uh, like one of those like uh, questions you ask at dinner or something, which is like, if you could meet anyone in the past, right? Past or present, right? Famous or not, just to spend time with, who would it be and why? Mm. I think it would be interesting, the early Warren Buffett, mm. the very early, mm -hmm. like his mindset from the beginning mm -hmm. because he was very successful there. Yes. I remember um, when I worked at this particular place, um, like a retail course, <laughs> trading course place, uh, I, d I wrote an article on Warren Buffett. Um, and I didn't know his story, to be fair. All I knew was this mega investor. So I, I learned that he had, he was such an entrepreneur from such a young age. I like literally, 12, 13 years old, he built a list of uh, uh, people who wanted newspaper delivered. Mm. Uh, but then he said he made the mistake of just taking that list to the shopkeeper yeah. <laughs> rather than just selling it to him or using it himself, yeah. which is, is fantastic because it just shows like, you know, no matter how big you are, you, you make those mistakes, you know? Yeah. But then he, I think he uh, put like uh, pinball machines in, in barber shops. He did mm. uh, vending machines in places, in laundry mats. It was crazy. Yeah, also, his his whole the the whole mindset behind mm. him, like in the early stage, because he, he was always the, as you said, the entrepreneur, mm. the building building business, and and very successful from the beginning yeah. from investing mm -hmm. into into big names, mm -hmm. only big names. Yeah, and um, it's um, insane. Mm -hmm. Like. Um, I think his, yeah, as I said, the mindset of him yeah. is is the mindset of a of a real, real good trader, and uh, I like one quote from him mm -hmm. the most, mm -hmm. um, which is good in in trading. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he said a few years ago, um, even in the biggest banks, mm -hmm. the money managers, they lose money, they lose you money like eighty percent of the time, mm -hmm. and uh, you're better off to just invest in S&P and let it run. Mm. Then that's how you make money. Mm -hmm. And that's his mindset, like only invest in big players and let it run. Mm -hmm. 
Would you would you agree with that as well? Definitely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Based on your experience and um, knowledge in the industry, would you say that a lot of people who are trading shouldn't be trading? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like when when people ask me what I do, mm-hmm. I I don't say trader. Mm-hmm. I'm a macroeconomist because I focus a lot of uh, stuff in in, in fundamentals of mm-hmm. macroeconomics. So that's how I can can show them easily what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And if like friends ask me like, okay, can you teach me all the kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. And through all the pain that I've been through the past 15 years, I usually say to them, no, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Don't go go down the road because it's the the chances to to be at the very top are so slim. Mm-hmm. Like you could be the best football star, or whatever. That's the same chance mm-hmm. in the end. Mm-hmm. But if you really want to do it, you have to to, bre- to be ready to put up the, the amount of um, time mm-hmm. um, that you have to put in. Because like the earliest, like three, four years in the beginning, it was 16 hours at least mm-hmm. a day for mm-hmm. me. Wow. And if, you, if you're not ready to, to give up a lot of stuff mm-hmm. in the first year, especially... Mm-hmm. There's no way. What would you say is realistic? Because like you said, the first three years were painful. Same with me, first three years were painful. And I've heard a lot of people say the first three years, on average, everyone's different, but on average, I've heard a lot of the time, three years, three and a half years, around that mark is literally pain, just pain, suffering, lessons, all that. Has that been your experience? Have you you recognized anything similar? Um, Yeah, but Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't been three years. I think pain is after 15 years the same <laughs> but uh, because it, you you You're always to pain. you have to adapt you mm-hmm. ha- it, the market isn't the same mm-hmm. so um but you you are more prepared mentally mm-hmm. for the pain mm-hmm. because you went through it yeah. a lot of times mm-hmm. and uh, you can recover mm-hmm. that's that's the experience of 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 the first one year two years three year whatever mm-hmm. like yeah but you have to go through it. <clears throat> Would you say it's possible for someone to have a strategy that they just, let's say, 15 years ago and it still works to this day? Um, yes. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, the exact same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not... Um, like, I know one trader. Mm-hmm. He's trading trend following and super easy. Mm-hmm. Like uh, One of the easiest strategies that I ever saw. Mm-hmm. And he trades it since 1990. Wow. And uh, yeah, he's a very he's a pit trader, a real pit trader, wow. and uh, and super easy, mm-hmm. and it, it still works. Wow, there you go. There's the myths, mm-hmm. <laughs> myth busters is what they call but it. He's he's not a multimillionaire, mm. but it works. Mm-hmm. Like he makes a living out of it mm-hmm. f- for forever. Mm-hmm. This is, that was one thing I was gonna say. Is like you know how you mentioned about people getting to the top of the top. Uh, that's one thing, and like you said, that's like you know, the hardest thing, and, and you know, the reality of that is the same as you becoming the best NBA player or football player, etc. But is it is it achievable to an acceptable manner? Like, is it achieve is it realistic for trade people who want to be traders to be able to make a living? Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely, because it. But still, you have to have the mindset for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That you accept it, mm-hmm. that you won't do a hundred k a month, mm-hmm. and other people do, mm-hmm. but you have to to be professional to see it as a in real income. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, um, my aim is ten k a month mm-hmm. with different firms, for example. Like, that's absolutely achievable mm-hmm. for for anyone. Mm-hmm. If you put up the time, if you you refine your strategy for it, if you're ready for for very much a very very slow trading mm-hmm. um if you're ready for that and you you refine your trade uh, your your strategy like that like easy mm-hmm. very easy and the final question i'll give you because i think it kind of relates to the end of that question which is um yeah you i would imagine you're someone who you know through through obviously your industry through the trading through the brokerage etc you have money right would you say that people have a misconception of how much money they actually need to live the life that they want. So let's say like 10K a month. I would imagine the majority of people for the life that they have in their mind could do that. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So um, for me, like 
I don't own Lamborghini or whatever. Like, um, I all I earn, I invest in long term mm -hmm. because I look 20 years, 30 years, mm -hmm. 50 years mm -hmm. in the future. So, um, and if you treat trading as a job, mm -hmm. like you should, you should um, determine where you stand mm -hmm. on the knowledge point, on the experience point. Like, um, are you able, reliable mm -hmm. to make huge amounts of money? Mm -hmm. Or is it more, because the, the things that I did with prop firms, mm -hmm. I did before on a personal account. Mm -hmm. So, um, but um, if you're up for 10K, 15K, 20K a month, mm -hmm. that's that's huge mm -hmm. for, for most people in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you see like the, the amount of prop firms that are out there right now, mm -hmm. and you trade with five of them, like five percent, two percent per month, is is absolutely achievable. Mm -hmm. Even if it's hard, mm -hmm. like if you do more than ten percent per year, you're basically out outpacing the S and P. Mm -hmm. So you're one of the greatest trader ever. Mm. No no questions asked. But um, with the leverage mm -hmm. and the risk you put in 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 forex, it's actually possible. Mm -hmm even though you will have setbacks as we talked before like the mm -hmm. the pain mm -hmm. will come mm -hmm. but um if you build up a bank yeah that should be no problem definitely i love that i love that i said that was going to be the last one but i'm afraid one very quick one at you when you look at the space i don't know how much you've seen the social media space in the fx industry when you look at the space and you see because we've talked a lot about you know traders being grouped and, and liquidity providers etc how many people Obviously, no names or anything. That's fine. But like, how many how many people would you say are lying using marketing techniques and you know, having access to back ends or owning brokerages to manipulate you know, what they're actually doing? How much do you think is actually legitimate versus how much is actually isn't legitimate? Essentially, um, I would say nine out of ten firms are are just here for the front end. Mm -hmm. Not not profits, but that's oh. interesting as well. I mean, like the you know, like the influencer traders, the ones right, saying yeah. like huge profits and this. Yeah, yeah. And that. I think almost all is fake. Mm -hmm. um, and you see someone like if if someone would sell you an EA or strategy, easy strategy, or you become millionaire, you know, yeah, that's a fake because mm -hmm. if if it's so easy for them, they won't sell you a strategy for five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. They would be out there on their yards and whatever, like mm -hmm. give a fuck about about that. Mm -hmm. But where's real value, I think, mm -hmm. is um, in real mentorship. Mm -hmm. Like if there's someone who who went through all that and want to give you that, mm -hmm. like the experience, the insights. Mm -hmm. I think that's 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 real, um, but not so these. Yeah, I put up. A strategy and and you trade along signal services that's mm. all bullshit but like like we said like the people are always searching for the holy grail mm -hmm. they always search for for the one strategy to dominate them all and mm -hmm. that's just not the case mm -hmm. if something like that is out there everybody would know and trade that yeah that's not the case yeah 100 percent Incredible podcast. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Yeah, and, that's uh, great. And hopefully in the future we'll do it again. Yeah, I'm excited to see where the space goes. And I, like I said, I have a feeling that a, the space that you're looking for will open. And then I'll be very interested to see what you do. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe after this podcast, the prop firm's going to be like, this guy knows too much. <laughs> he knows too much. <laughs> but, um, no, really incredible. Now, everyone, make sure... You drop a comment with your biggest takeaway because there was a lot to take away from this episode. Uh, hit subscribe. Make sure you get the links for Pasquale in the description below. And until next time, everyone, take care.